talk about those arrests that happened during the coronation. They were, well, uh, quite a sort of surprise, but a distraction really from our key message. Because that group, Republic, if you look at it, it's got loads of money behind it, an expensive van that the police suddenly just emptied in public and made that into the news. Now, they are controlled opposition. They've got masses of backing and their, their uh, gaffer is getting a book published on, on, you know, mainstream publishers. Well, nobody who's really opposing the World Economic Forum is going to have anything published in, in the mainstream publishing. So, they are controlled opposition, right? However, of course, some people are dragged into this and then get arrested, you know, not knowing what they're doing. And of course, all the people arrested should be released, but, uh, and the police explain themselves, but we should hear from all the people who were arrested, especially those in charge, just really what are they up to and what is behind them. Um, they were arrested, of course, under the new Public Order Act, which came on May the 3rd. And the point of the arrest is to scare other people and, as I said, detract from our message and talk about this kind of anti-monarchist thing, which I'm not against as such, but it's a distraction from the key political message of the day. Charles has to be answerable to the people, not to the World Economic Forum. Now, to understand this new law, it's the new Public Order Act came out in, in effect on May the 3rd, and it's against obstructing major transport or attaching yourself to objects uh, to cause distraction. And uh, uh, the police have powers to seize any objects which they think could be used to make protests. Which of course that is very sweeping. Now, during the coronation day, they came to us and they did threaten us, but not under the new law, actually. They had enough, they could deal with us. They said, if we played loud music, it could be causing alarm and distress to people at all. Like so, we didn't play any music during the procession anyway, so we could get our message across. But I think the point people have to know about all this is that in this period now, when the powers that be are actually losing support, they're going to be desperate to divide and confuse the movement and bring in controlled opposition and all sorts of messages just to confuse us. And our answer, of course, is a united way forward. We have a new pledge on what we think about um, uh, the United Kingdom. Instead of pledging uh, Prince Charles's new pledge, which effectively means more power to the World Economic Forum, we say we pledge allegiance to an independent United Kingdom and our movement to defend it against tyranny, whether from home or abroad, and to build an accountable future based on freedom, justice and democracy. And to back all that up, we're building a united front, not just let the UK leave, but others, like Sikh groups and uh, well, many groups, um, a big united front on key issues that anybody must support to fight the world up And if they don't support it, then we wouldn't support them in election. And people who support this shouldn't stand against each other. We have to negotiate. And the key issues on the United Front, it's all online, is the helicopter visiting us, and we speak out of it. The key issues are men are men, women are women. Roads are for travel. And underline it all, he demands about accountability. Anybody elected has to be removable if, if a section of the public of reasonable size demands a re-election, we have to have it. We've got to have an accountable future and defeat the tyranny of the World Economic Forum. So I'll leave there and say our usual slogan in one. Resist, Resist defy, defy, do not comply. Freedom. Thank you.